Okay, so this is type uh, type B interruption. Um, so we usually count it as sending aorta and then the PDA here. So um, okay, for the sake of uh, so just putting a retraction stitch to the duct. Put it here. Um, as I said in the uh, last week, um, so you, you when we go on bypass, you have to um, control the primary breath flow. So usually we um, snare the both PAs. This is the right PA, and um, LPA usually is behind the duct. Where is that? Yeah. This one, no? Yeah. Yeah, so um, we usually snare down unless um, you have uh, lots of room to actually ligate them. So let's divide the duct, eh? Just one second. This one. Yeah, so you can see this right PA and an LPA. So we just ligate here. So depending on the the length of the PDA, <coughs> sometimes it's impossible to ligate uh, until you do a circuit arrest. Be, um, depending on where you can ate them. Let's take this out. Let's take this out. Can you grab the proximal PDA? Yeah. So this one, you make sure that you're not going to ligate the LPA. It's not um, it's not a negligible risk to cause the severe LPA stenosis. Okay, here. Okay. So and then. Start dissecting. So it's easy to dissect this here, uh, ascending aorta, and then all the way up to here, and then uh, snare the neck vessel one, two. Once you've done that, uh, um, you just retract this, and then start dissecting the descending aorta. Um, it can be very hard, oops, uh, to dissect. So um, what I usually do is to get down to like 20. Uh, 22 or 21 degree um, on uh, rectal temperature and then take this uh, ductal cannula out um, at while this ascending aorta is still going as a selective cerebral perfusion and uh, we'll go ahead and um, okay so um, yeah now we can take it Breaking the navio seems. Might not be a good idea. Okay. <coughs> so once we divide the duct, um, so assistant will hold like this or um, a usual hockey stick uh, cross cram mm -hmm. and then uh, dissect this way. Obviously you have a um, left recurrent nerve uh, coming along like this so you have to go inside of the uh, plane and then go all the way down. So you, you have to see at least two or three pairs of uh, intracostal branch until you, uh, you think it's happy. So here, um, and then it's clamped here. Um, here, so these are by definition the ductal tissue. Okay? So, um, and then the difficulty here is that the origin of the left subclavian almost always have a ductal tissue. 
So in order to um, preserve the left subclavian, we have to leave some ductal tissue, unfortunately. Um, so cut it out. So this side you can cut uh, all of the ductal tissue. Yeah. And um, depending on the opening, you may want to get into the subclavian nati just a little bit, uh, but just leave it until we have. Um, okay. So that's so this part. Um, I personally do it with a <coughs> selective cerebral perfusion through the ascending aortic cannula, um, and then uh, arrest the heart anti-grade cardiopegia and we'll go ahead and open the right atrium and invent the LV. Um, at that point, uh, we'll do a circuit arrest and take our uh, cannula out. Um, then uh, we'll make an incision. So this patient have a pretty good size ascending aorta, but uh, typically it's smaller. Okay, so now we just relax, yeah, so anterior lateral, somewhere around here. So if you have a small ascending aorta, it's, it's very uh, common to hit the back wall, so you have to be careful. Not Okay. I think it's one of the most difficult things isn't it, to, to get that incision right because you're really almost going to work around the back of the ascending aorta. That's right, yeah. Incision, you write up the back <coughs> of it, it's difficult to. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. So. You usually slide off to one side. Yeah, so mm -hmm. make sure you go, um, you, you don't spiral. And then uh, if you go too posterior, it makes it very difficult. Okay, so, and then coming up. So I'm. I'm really at the origin of the uh, carotid artery. Um, now, um, I usually go down a little bit on the uh, ascending aorta. So that, so the extension here is depending on the size of the ascending aorta. As I said, this ascending aorta is quite good size. That should be okay. And then uh, we'll, we'll match the, so this one and this one has to come like this. Right. So depending on that, you may want to add more incision, but this one to me looks pretty big, so... Uh, and... Seven now. Okay. Yeah. Usually start from the uh, one stitch from the toe, inside out. Can you see the anastomosis? Yeah. Okay. And um, one stitch from the toe, um, outside in. So if you lined up well, you should be able to run it with one bite. And make sure you got the adventitia on both sides. Obviously, there's no adventitia on the model, but for the aortic artery construction, you really want to have adventitia on both sides.
Oops. So this uh, descending aorta is amazingly big compared to uh, typical interruption. Okay, so but typically this structure is much smaller, so most of the time we have to add the patch. So I'll just stop here. Maybe one more. So by this time, this descending earth has become a little flat like this. So that's when I usually stop, but this descending earth is quite big. Okay. So we started just uh, before the before the toe. So just start with inside out on the toe. So these are all ductile tissue and it's quite friable and that's a source of bleeding so make sure there's no tear. Okay. And I usually saw this corner completely so that's really simplifies your patch shape. Oops. Okay. Okay, so something like that. You, s you see how uh, descending out the flattens like this. So that's that's about right. So this is kind of halfway an anterior wall of uh, uh, descending aorta. At this point, I usually start the anterior cerebral perfusion through this uh, innominate artery. Um, then, uh, so you s this is the descending aorta. So I'll go ahead and then cut it in like that much. And um, oops, I want to cut that. Okay. And then this portion probably just a little bit. So and you, you, your part's going to be like from here to there. And then patch wise, thank you. Okay, so thank you. Um, can you see the patch? Okay, so so here, so we wanna look at this dimension. Okay, so this is a tip, I guess. So not not you're gonna need a very big one. Something like this. And um, then you have to have this curve. So, right, so this one's going something like that, right? And uh, this dimension has to match to here. Yeah, something like this. And then this portion is goes like that. So eventually it's going to be something like this shape, right? <coughs> and so. So 
So we usually use the treated pericardium. So we typically treat for five minutes. You just start from uh, like two t two stitches from a toe. Side out. It doesn't matter where you start, but then um, you have to have this toe uh, bite hemostatic with no obstruction. So that's pretty much the toe bite. Just go ahead and uh, sew to this corner. assistant try to go to the other side of the aorta and if you think that it's gonna bleed you can you can add the uh, additional um, mattress stitch just, just be more hemostatic Obviously, you leave, you leave the longer, uh, longer suture so that you have more options. <coughs> yeah, perfect. So this is the outside. So we're just gonna go from outside in. So here, is another area that. Uh, 
breeze a lot so you you make sure there's no accessible advance As I, I've been told I do exactly the same way really. Yeah, really? People who okay. sort of published yeah. trying to do interruption repairs without using any artificial material and mm -hmm. putting everything together. But the risk you know, is that you create you, you, you put you bring them together under so much tension that they're trapping the bonkers underneath it. Yeah, the exactly. Things that you see um, obstructed left bonkers for yeah. the left lung uh, if you try to make the repair too tight. Much better, I think, to routinely put it in the yeah. question. Uh, I, usually, I, must say, I usually cut up into the subclave in origin, but you routinely mm -hmm. to sort of you know, maximize your native tissue to native tissue yeah. component to the elastomasis for growth. So this one's come up to the corner. So this is the corner we anticipated. That's about right. It's actually longer than I thought. Mm -hmm. So we came came up to this corner. <coughs> Just one second. Stuck. There we this point <coughs> so from the beginning to this point uh, we usually keep this um, uh, vascular clamp on a descending aorta on and then uh, here um, I usually take it out uh, let it sit in a normal geometry so that's a last um, aortic arch to, to be filled so that looks pretty good and then uh, we'll just look at how much bulging that's need. So this one's quite good. And um, you can see that the lumen is widely patent. And then now we'll just look at this area, how much you need. And uh, looking, so this is the uh, ascending aorta suture line, and then this is a patch. So I'll say, can I have a marking pen? I'm just thinking like here. And go ahead and cut. Make sure you're not cutting the suture. Okay. And then so make sure. So this is about. So um, if you don't do this, you may kink here. Right. So that's. So if it's filled, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit. A little bit more, I think. Okay. <coughs> I'm gonna sew it to that. Okay, so we are outside. Huh? Yeah.
So I'll keep sawing down. Again, make sure in a real world you make sure you got that ventisha on the back wall. So that's really make a difference in terms of <coughs> the hemostasis. proximal end and so make sure you're happy with the size of the ascending aorta so this is the last opportunity you may want to get into the sinotubular junction if needed to but this one's quite big and then make sure you're happy so that looks quite good in terms of a uh, patch shape there's no kinking or anything um, and then here so when it when it's um, happy with proximal end, uh, I usually make it a little wider here so that the patch sits better. Okay, and then um, we'll go ahead and cut this end. This is pretty much parallel to your incision. <coughs> Go ahead then and finish up this uh, proximal end. Oops. Here you have to make sure that you're actually <coughs> enlarging this area. Sometimes your suture line purslane and uh, actually cause stenosis on the aorta. <coughs> so make sure that's not the uh, case here. So I'm advancing a little bit on the patch so that that kind of sits better. At this point, the all you have to think about is uh, um, bulging of the mid arch. Right? So again, uh, we'll fill with the blood and then kind of put it in a natural position and um, kind of imagine when it's pressurized how this part is going to sit. And then uh, your suture line is here, so <coughs> have the something like this, right? Yeah, here. <coughs> okay. And uh, we'll 
also from here. So by definition, because you're creating some bulging, your patch, is, patch suture line is much longer than the native arch, so you have to start advancing proportionally. Because otherwise, it's going to be very ugly patch, because you have to make up in, uh, in one particular portion. I'm advancing on the patch and com coming back on the native aorta. I'm advancing a lot for the sake of time. It's going to bleed a lot in the real world. <laughs> Is how it looks. I'll show you when it's. So let's see. <coughs> yeah, so when it's pressurized, it's going to be like this. So that should be quite good. Yeah, there's no kinking here. So if you don't cut this um, adequately, then that's going to kink. I think it's going to be OK like that. And um, OK. So and then the VST, so this VST happens to be uh, uh, almost doubly committed. So but typically, you will see the um, narrowed LB outer tract around here with uh, lots of posterior deviation of septum. Um, so where you want to look at is this area, if you have an infundibular septum to resect, but this one you don't have it. So, um, okay, so where is the uh, anterior end of VST? Okay. So this mark here. Yeah, if you run the rim of the VST. Yeah, yeah. So where's the promoy valve? That's okay, that's the promoy valve. Okay. So it's kinda outlet VST. Okay. So one thing um, we pay attention to in this um, Again, uh, this is not a typical um, VST for intrapteritic arch. They usually have this muscle intact here and uh, posterior deviated. So um, what you don't want to do is to make the VST patch small so that that makes entire outer tract small. So this dimension from here to there, you want to have almost like oversized patch. So 
for that to make sure you're not torturing the BSD patch. So that's the only difference. I'm just going to do uh, half of them, then you can start doing that. So from here to there. Mm, something like this, huh? Then, okay, so y you can learn both ways, but I will just do whatever uh, I've been doing. So, um, so here is the corner. So this is a corner, so the kind of bottom of the BST. So your conduction will be right here. So we usually start where the conduction is away. So conduction I was thinking like here, right? Or maybe a little bit leftward of this uh, marking. Uh, okay. So so we'll just start here. So the first stitch can be uh, forehand or uh, backhand. And obviously you don't want to put it anything on the left side. It has to be on the right side. Can you see? It's hard. It's hard, eh? It's hard for you to That's see. Better? That's better? That's <laughs> better? Is that better? Yeah, it's yeah, okay. okay. And I will just go up on the uh, infant septum first. In a uh, normal pain membrane VST, you have to look mm. at the uh, aortic valve, but because it's the deviated septum, you are actually quite away from the aortic valve. Okay, so why don't we, yeah, why don't we put it here? Okay. Two millimeter distance. Um, it's a bit, you know, try to do it proportional. See there? Yeah, you can see that. So. Okay. So anyway, we, so this side will move up to the trackers valve uh, and then they come up to here. It's actually not, not about the VST to practice the VST closure, it's quite large. So we'll just stop here. Um, so as I said, you come up to here. And on this side. So go ar along this um, uh, muscle, but lateral to the conduction. Lateral to the conduction to here. And then come up. And then uh, we usually do the mattress. Uh, on the superior end. Okay? Any questions? <coughs> 